let's see how we can convert this array into an object like this. Where the key is the index and the value is the element in the array. So we'll simply use array.reduce method, which has two parameters. First is the callback, second is the initial value. We'll see in a minute where we're using this. Then in the callback, we have three parameters, previous value, value, and an index. Actually, we have four, but we're only gonna use the first three. Now let's print all of these to understand what reduce does. So let's run the code. So as you can see, reduce calls this callback for every single element of the array. Initially, for the first call, the previous value is empty object, which actually represents this initial value. For the next call, it will be whatever we returned in the previous call, which in this case, we're not returning anything, so it will be undefined. And the value and the index is like obvious, the values from the array index, and the index is the actually index of the element. Now let's see how we can convert this array into the object. So what we had to do, as initially, previous value is an empty object, we want to set the index equal to the apple that will be the value onto this object. And we also want to return this and send it to the next call. In the next call, which is for orange, the previous value is already set for the apple. And that will have zero equal to apple. Now we're also setting one equal to orange and so on. So if we try to run this and actually also store this in an object and run this. So now let's run this. And as you can see, we're getting the object. Zero apple, one orange, two banana. Let's see how we can use reduce to generate an object which will give us the count of each element in the array. We'll simply use array.reduce. We'll pass it a callback and the initial value, which will be an uh, empty object. Then in the callback, we'll pass the previous value and the current value. As this reduce runs this callback for every single element of the array. And the first time it will run it for this apple, the previous value will be an empty object. Now we'll simply do previous value, value equal to First way to check if the value which in the first uh, run it will be apple exists in the previous value so we'll simply do previous value of value if it exists what we're going to do we're going to actually previous value plus one else we'll set it to one and return the previous value so for the first apple previous value will be empty and we'll check does the apple exist which it doesn't so we'll actually set it to one but for the second time when it reaches this apple it will see in the previous value the apple exists so we'll only plus the value so let's now save the result and console log it and now run the code so as you can see apple is two time banana is one time and orange is one time let's see how we can group this uh, data object array on the name field so the output should be something like this so we have uh, this john and the array is actually uh, these objects in which the name is equal to john and for the jane objects uh, in which the name is equal to jane so let's see how we can do this using reduce. So we'll simply do data dot reduce. First thing will be a callback. Second thing will be an empty object. And the callback will only use a previous value and the value. So what we will do is simply on the previous value, we'll set value dot name because we're actually grouping on the name field. Then we'll check if in the object, the value dot name already existed. If it does, what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually spread the existing values, which were the name, and add the current value. And if it doesn't exist, so we'll simply create an array with the value in it. And we'll return this previous value. So when it will run for the first object, it will see that the name.john doesn't exist because for the first call, the previous value would be this, an empty object. So if it doesn't exist, it will simply set it equal to an array with the value, which will be the object. And when it will reach the third array, it will see that the value.name already exists in this previous object. And what it is do, it will actually spread out the existing value, which will be this one, and add this object into it. So let's see the output now. Let's first save this into a result variable and then console log it. Now let's run it. As you can see, we have grouped the array and the key is here John. And the value is a list of two objects for which the name is actually John. And same for the Jane, as there were only one object for it. So we'll have a list of one object. So let's see how we can flatten this array using reduce method. So we'll simply pass first callback. Second will be the empty object with the initial value. Then we'll use previous value and the value only. Now reduce will run this callback three times for every element of this array. And for the first time, the previous value will be this empty object. So what we'll simply do is return spread this previous value, comma, because previous value for the first time it will be an empty object so it's not a problem and the value will be this array one two so what we have to do is spread it and at the end everything will be put into a list so for the second time this callback will run in the previous value we'll already have one and two and then we'll be spreading this three four and so on 
Now let's save the result into this result and console log it. Now run it. As you can see, the result is a flattened array. So let's see how we can sum this array using reduce. So we'll simply pass the two objects. First is the callback. Second is the initial value. In the callback, we'll be only using two things, previous value and the value. As this reduce, call this callback for every element into the array. For the first time, when it calls, the previous value would be actually equal to the zero. For the next time, it will be whatever it, we return in the previous run. So if we return here, previous value plus the value. So what will happen initially, it will be zero plus one, and we're returning the value one. For the second call, it will be one previous value plus the next will be two. That will be equal to three and so on. So first let's save it into a variable. And also console order. Now if we run it, as you can see, the value is 6. 